are some mistakes and everything, but I, I think uh, the mistakes come from uh, a little bit wrong approach eh, uh, to this music. Look, um, you have to know that uh, not all piano literature, which was written for piano, you understand English, right? Uh, was actually intended 100% to be for piano. For example, let's take some composer of Mozart, yeah? He has written some nice melodies, some ideas, musical ideas he has, and then he doesn't get a call, there was no phone at that time, but he gets a letter and he says, Mr. Mozart, we need few symphonies, we'll pay you very well. He looks, okay, I have this melody, then he assembles it and makes a symphony. But if he was asked, like, uh, can you write some string quartets? He goes, okay, I have the, this melody, I'll make a string quartet. So, uh, some music, like, for example, if you take a Chopin ballad, this is a music for piano, yeah? You cannot imagine it for uh, any other instrument. This is really 100% uh, full-scale piano music. But we have examples, and this is a very, very good example of the music which is written for piano, but it sounds absolutely like a piece for the orchestra. Yeah? This is, for me, I can very clearly see this. It, it could be a movement of some uh, symphony, yeah? some kind of scherzo, for example. Yeah? So when you play this kind of music, before you start like practice and everything, you have to first make kind of uh, understanding of if this music would be, it's very symphonic music, yeah? if it would be for orchestra, which instruments, like you have to a little bit act like a symphonic composer, which instruments would I assign to this line, to this melody, yeah? and then it's much easier to understand many things, for example, what tempo it should be. Yeah? To find the because you know Beethoven wrote some kind of metronome uh, how fast but his metronome as I heard uh, was not very precise yeah it was not electronic metronome it was like uh, quite quite long yeah? first and then it's much easier to understand for example what do you think so let's, let's just imagine this is a part of the symphony right Scherzo. also many symphonies have scherzo right is a very standard uh, what to say uh, tradition right. So, what do you think? What instruments would you assign to this beginning of this movement? Just imagine you are a composer and you are writing a symphony. What? Just, just let's. There's no right and wrong answer. Just I want you a little bit to participate. Okay. For example, let's start with the left hand. Just tap, 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 tap. Which instrument you would use for the left hand if you are a symphonic composer? What do you think? Uh. Let's. Let's think together. What? Violin. Violin here. Wow. Here, violin. That should be a big violin. That's probably like three meters big violin. Come on. Violin cannot play that low. Violin starts somewhere, I don't know. No, violin is it's not even for viola, even for cello, it's too, too loud. Which instrument would it? And then you have to always think, you see, this is the reason why if you study, you study music, right? You study piano. You should not only study piano only, but you should sometimes hear concerts of uh, a gold and hear some symphonies, some symphonic music, because otherwise it will be very boring to play Beethoven because you don't know anything else. Yeah? You just learn this piece. But if you would go to uh, uh, symphonic concerts, for example, yes, yeah? or somewhere, and hear a lot of symphonic music, then you think, ah, it sounds like this symphony. Ah, this sounds like that, you know? So for me, it's absolutely obvious yeah, that this kind of, it has, a, it sounds a little bit funny, right? It has some kind of uh, funny effect here, yeah? Like, I don't know, some, uh, I don't know, some old man is kind of uh, yeah, complaining about it. Yeah? So, uh, this kind of uh, effect and this kind of sound, and considering the how low is it uh, here, this is probably a bassoon. Uh, this is bassoon always has this kind of very funny effect. Yeah. So this is for me very. Obvious. But of course you could give it to contrabass like pizzicato, but it doesn't sound that funny. So probably bassoon. Yeah. So then we have here this melody. Also, for me, the answer is 100%. Which one do you think? Which instrument should be written in the right hand? Just don't say violin. 
just think what kind of well, but it's very simple actually. Look, first of all, we have long chord, like long chord, and then the answer is very uh, easy because look, which instruments usually play like this? Which kind of instrument always plays this? It's horn. It's because of the horn construction. They most beautifully sound this kind of instrument. Six, five, three. And they always play it. You know this. Yeah, this all. This is a horn. Just this is a hunting horn, and this is like normal orchestra horn, right? So for me, there's absolutely a hundred percent sure that there will be three horns, two horns, and, and we know how horn sound. Horn sound is very warm, yeah, and horn cannot play very fast. They have a kind of limitation. They cannot. It doesn't sound beautiful when they play very fast. So it means it's allegretto vivace. Means it's not very fast. You play presto. It's too fast. Yeah? And also when we play left hand, it's not, it's not funny also because also bassoon has limitations. Yeah, uh, bassoon also cannot play too fast. Yeah, so. instruments? No. Also very obvious. When you need high notes. Woodwind flute, clarinet. Yeah, so we have horn and bassoon. Woodwind. No? Probably strings. So this will be violin <laughs> now, finally. Yeah. Now either violins, there's a string, string, or maybe even with a timpani. This will be celli, yeah, so cello, and then again. Yeah. So it's very obvious. Sometimes there are many options, but here almost no options. Here's almost 100% this kind of it. Yeah. So just we know how horn sounds, we know what kind of tempo horn can play to sound beautiful. But so so I think tempo is just yeah, to, 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 to. Yeah? and then it should be is a, is a funny effect left. So probably this tempo, yeah? Let me uh, have a metronome here, let's see. If I can find tempo. Yeah, this is uh, 76. Yeah, let's try this one. Yeah, so I would say maybe maximally 80. Yeah? I wouldn't play faster than 80 because it will be just rushy and boring. Yeah? Can you this tempo, please? Yeah? So around, wait, I'll write it down. Yeah, maybe this tempo maximum there. Yeah. Can you play the left hand alone? Only left. Yeah. Okay. Look, uh, you have to also think that we have a such a thing that is called phrasing. We have two beats, right? One, two. Within these two beats, we have always four uh, groups, right? Always a group starts heavy. So one, two, three, four. So heavy, light, light, light. Yeah. And of course, the last note of the group is always light. But you play it. That cannot happen. Because for one is a heavy light, heavy light, heavy light. Then this is first what we have to fix. Right? Yeah. And now it's wonderful. Just all you have to do is now add some funny effect. Like a little bit of. Small dynamic changes, yeah? Don't play everything in the plane dynamic. Yeah? Yeah, small. Just a little bit, that it's not boring. Just you see how it goes down, up, yeah? Follow the line. You should sound like laughing, like ha 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 ha. Forward, 
then we step back. Yum bum bum is me. No, upper note, high note. Bum 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 bum. Yeah, it's a ascending. Bum bum bum. Yeah. No, not lower. Lower note is. Circle, bum 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 bum, eh? Like, no, no, first, bum 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 bum, so. Yes, yes, so we see one note, thank you, it's enough. Yeah, so left hand is now fine. Now let's do it together with the right, and right, the thing, three horns, eh? Warm, steady sound. Bum bum bum, let's try. E slow tempo. Yeah, more intensive, you know. It's a, it's a brass instrument, so it has a quite strong sound. Warm but strong. Yes. Not just more tenuto, eh? Yeah, more, more intensive sound. If you play it close. Yeah. And both hands. things uh, which composer writes he writes always have found this for sound on the light beat you play it's boring but this is yeah. this even makes even more funny effect yeah because we don't expect a sudden for sound on the light beat oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> melody yeah there's only not enough melody okay then now we have pianissimo strings playing yeah the violin don't rush violin will play legato legato Because it's all same. Then, do then we have just tutti, yeah? the entire orchestra is playing all instruments. Brum, it should be very big. Yeah? So pedal, brum, da, 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 da. Yeah, be much bigger. Yeah? This is too small sound. Yeah? You have to sit back and use your shoulders. Uh, 
you know what the concepts of the earth are looking funny to me. Okay, let's say I would say the strings again. Pop, 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 so, but they will not rush, right? If it's good orchestra, yeah. if the uh, orchestra musicians are rushing, they'll be fired from the orchestra. Just they're not doing their work properly. So, yep, that, that, that. stay in the middle one tempo, please. No, tap, tap, tap. They will play it quite energetic, right? But I know it's there. I guess piano, probably. Yeah, uh, piano, but not pianissimo. Yeah. So Beethoven's piano always has some energy and power. So I would say almost mezzo corte. It has definitely some kind of almost aggressive uh, you know, approach. It's very stubborn, this. No, you can play stubborn. Stubborn means more intensive. you jump with your uh, uh, wrist. You see the sound is very weak and it has no substance. If you don't jump but strongly catch the key. Piano, but it's you know, uh, please don't confuse dynamic and idea. Many students they see piano pianissimo, they play boring. Piano never means boring, and it can be million types of piano. It can be uh, relaxed piano, it can be uh, like here, desperate piano, eh? it can be scared piano. It can be, so there's a million of ways how you to, to play piano. So you have to always look what is what happens here, what kind of idea we have, what kind of story, eh? and then look at the dynamic, right. But not just okay, piano, then I play small. No, no. Okay, next. Yeah, and then, of course, this rhythm, which is a little bit difficult to play, bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, yeah, it makes it even more, uh, how to say, desperate and nervous. But you play, ta -da, ta -da. it doesn't, doesn't really make this impression, right? Ba -bum. If you would play this rhythm more precise, then it would be much better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a of pedal maybe, I would just, a very short pedal just to make it more, uh, let's see, freedom in. Yeah. Something like this, yeah? Very short pedal. 
scale, but a little bit of pedal without it sounds too dry and kind of plain. But, uh, you should play it on the first note, ta -da. like on the first note on or on the second off. Maybe also bassoon, two bassoons, dot, 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 they will not rush. Uh, and then this, of course, this is very funny, I mean, this is really like... Uh, this is really kind of uh, really kidding, huh? like that. Uh, this is a very funny moment from our opinion. Yeah? And it's written pianissimo, but that doesn't mean this is boring. Uh, this is uh, really a joke. Huh? Kind of a parody. It's very, very. Can it be a little bit evil? A little bit. Like, you know? A little bit like, ha ha ha. There's something like that. It's too nice what you play. On the second note, you come too early. This is the same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can we do somewhere from maybe uh, somewhere from, yeah, so somewhere from here? Right? You do, yeah, let's do from C major. You don't need to play very fast now. With the, with the upper note. With sol, we have to start. Thank you. 
Let's see more quality in fingers. Yeah. It's not arpeggiato, yeah. You play it almost like arpeggiato. Yeah, but the ray is the strongest note. So your fifth finger has to be more sensitive. Changes here. So first, so every change you should feel. Yeah? Every change you should kind of uh, feel and show us that something new happens. There is some kind of uh, connection there. Same stuff, yeah. Um, I think you're supposed to play Prokofiev sonata, right? But you change the piece, yeah. You play only this movement or something else? You have some other piece? Uh, I want to play Prokofiev. Okay, let's let's do a little bit of Prokofiev, yeah. same but 10 times bigger. Here is really dark, here is really evil, and uh, here it is more dangerous. Yeah? The problem is uh, when uh, a teacher says you yeah, or you or wh whoever that your rhythm is bad, you have to play a uh, better rhythm, it is not because we are so boring people we want to you know, just uh, always criticize you. No, because if your rhythm is not precise, then uh, the music sounds completely different. When you play like this, yeah, it doesn't sound evil at all. But if you play, yeah, uh, it can be just a small change in the rhythm, and entire idea of the music piece is broken. Yeah? Here we have to. Uh, I mean, I, many students of mine in Yonsei they play this piece, and I'm always uh, fighting with them because always they play bad rhythm. And then, what can you do? I mean, this piece is, uh, you know, especially Prokofiev. If you have bad sense of rhythm, don't play Prokofiev. Yeah? Or, develop a good sense of rhythm. Yeah? Practice it and make it better. Because Prokofiev is a composer who requires a perfect sense of rhythm. Like, you have to be built in metronome, you know? The perfect one. Yeah? Otherwise, it doesn't work. And this music needs this. Yeah? So, first of all, all of, this, all of students, really, all, they always come to early on the second piece. Always very good. You have to 
two, three, one, two, one, two. Okay? So put it already in the first step to make it more, uh, make it better. Yeah? If you don't rush the second beat, pum, 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 ya, si, ya. And in between, you have to bring the notes in exactly, uh, evenly. Yeah? Can you try? Yeah, then your sound is very, I would say, sticky and but I think it shouldn't be very much legato. You should play uh, almost on legato. Yeah? It's whispering. It's a real whispering. Yeah? It's not uh, singing, not at all. It has nothing from singing here. You get it? It's very motoric music and very, uh, how to say, uh, very transparent. Yeah? And kind of it has stings. Yeah? It's really, this music is so uh, that you don't want to touch it. You have the feeling you will uh, injure yourself. Yeah? It has a lot of stings. It should be a very sharp feeling. Let's do slower tempo because in first maybe you cannot do it now, but let's do slower tempo. Yeah. Can you? It's wonderful that you are so kind person, right? Kind and lovely. But in this music you have to forget it and you have to become a very evil person. Yeah? Just remember the last time when you were very angry with somebody and you thought, ah, I will show you that. This kind of feeling you have to have when you play behemoth or something like that. Yeah? It's very evil. Very evil. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah? And it, like you really, you're like you're saying, I'm gonna kill you, something like this. Okay? Yeah, but you have to whisper it. You don't say it loudly. Loudly is not uh, not scary. Scary is when you whisper it. Then it's scary. For piano. <laughs> you play nice round legato Chopin style. Uh, the problem is, of course, it's difficult because uh, uh, for fingerings, if you play 5 4 here, yeah, they are very weak fingers, they cannot. Four notes in good rhythm without rushing. And without diminuendo, no diminuendo. No, no diminuendo. No, just marcato. Ta -ta 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 -tam. The same idea. This is rather diminuendo, I think. Because look, melody is. Uh, what can you say? Yeah, melody. Look, there's no crescendo by composer. Right? Yeah. What happens? For me, it's disappearing. Yeah? So it's rather running away. So. Uh,
if you, I hope you study music theory, yeah, that every music theory teacher will explain you that you cannot double five, right? One, three, five. So five double is wrong. Actually, so here composer, uh, Il Bogo, uh, he makes a mistake, actually. Instead of normal. Uh, he made it. Uh, he makes an uh, intentional mistake in terms of music theory to make it sound more scary. Yeah, so we have to know this. Can this only beginning of it? I'm Sonata and regular piece, sonata has a, a clear structure. Right? It has a theme, a theme, and then the, let's say anti-theme, whatever. Right? So and they have also to stay in contrast to each other. Right? So we had the first tema was right? dangerous and evil. Then the second tema, and this was in A minor. Right? Here we have what in C major, right? It should be contrasting. Yeah? Uh, where, where, where is it? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Or, uh, uh, it's, it resembles a little bit like, uh, of course, with strange harmonies, but it resembles a Russian folk song or something. Uh, so. so it should be a noise, definitely. Uh, so we have, to, uh, we have to sing. And of course, you should change your tempo a little bit. You cannot play the same tempo here. Uh, you should relax. Poco meno mosso. So, and again, if you would like hear more music of Prokofiev, not just piano music, uh, but he has a fantastic, like Romeo and Julia, or uh, he has a fantastic things like um, he has, a, he wrote, do you know that Prokofiev wrote movie music? There was a famous uh, Soviet um, movie director named uh, Eisenstein, I believe. German sounding name, but he was uh, Russian. So he uh, made a movie which is called uh, Prince Alexander Nevsky. This is historical movie. So Prokofiev wrote music, uh, movie music is fantastic. Yeah? And uh, sometimes you can, and this movie is of course very old, nobody watches it today, but uh, he made also a cantata. So you can go to a concert hall and hear this movie music actually. It's fantastic. He has a lot of beautiful, this kind of, because it's about history. So many of melodies, they resemble Russian folk songs or something. So when you know this music, it will be very easy for you to play this tune because it's very similar. Eh? Uh, so just always try to hear other uh, pieces written by composer, not only, you know, sonata, piano sonata, here are symphonies, here this. Oh, he wrote movie music, great, I want to hear something like this. Yeah? Then you know uh, the composer's thinking, it's much easier to learn the piece. Eh? Can we do this from here? Da -da 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 -da. So here you have to somewhere to switch from, from this motoric and evil to the beautiful and relaxed. <laughs> No, 
singer, it's a huge jump, octave jump, it's huge, it's very difficult to sing. Singer needs time always for big jumps, right? You cannot, nah, nah, eh, it was <laughs> impossible. Yeah, it needs time. Again, you have to hear local music too, right? To know how it works, right? So it's only it seems more expressive melody. Slowly, slowly. Soprano, maybe. But on the other side, you have to, you know, this, um, you have to this phrasing, right? Sol is same. Sol, sol, no. One is smaller, one is bigger. Um, Probably first is bigger, second is smaller. It still doesn't sound like uh, you know, like singing. Yeah, so you have to work on it. And, uh, make it okay. <laughs> I think this piece. Let's see if I can more or less the same. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Ooh, ugly fire. Very nice. Okay, good, good. Thank you.